my name's Daniel and welcome to this new lockdown series, Corinthians Dream Team, where we're going to be joined by past members of Corinthians as they go through their starting 11. Tonight, we're joined by Ben Adams, Corinthians Chairman and Vets Reserves Player. Ben, welcome. How are you doing? Hi, Dan. I'm okay, mate. You? All good. Thank you very much. All good. good. So excited for tonight and naming your 11 aside, but it's been difficult trying to decide. Oh, it's been extremely difficult. I mean, I've, I've been here 20 years now, so obviously there's a lot of good players that I've played with and obviously I haven't played really that much for the last 10 years, maybe. So mine's obviously quite a lot of ma from managing as well. So, But the players I've named, I have actually played with at some point. So, yeah, it was, it was tough. It was really tough. I bet. So 20 years. So what teams have you been involved with over those 20 years? It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. I mean, I, I started back um, with Phil Byan and da Darren Summerhays and Abdul. In, in We only had one men's team that played in the Borough Com. I think it was Division 3 or 4. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was way back then. Um, and then, obviously, it's gone on from there. Uh, as we've moved up, I, I obviously never had the opportunity to play at the, the higher level with the club because, obviously, I was managing at that point. But most of the games that I did play with the lads was kind of in the, in the Premier League of the South End Borough combination. Um, and obviously a lot of the lads have then gone on to play for to higher teams in the club. So, Awesome, brilliant, that's great. So have you always been a Corinthians man or where did your footballing journey begin? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, I played I played a fair bit at school and uh, obviously ended up playing for the district. Um, had trials with Brentford when I was under 16s. Uh, unfortunately got injured. Um, story of a lot of footballers' lives. Um, and then ended up kind of taking a back seat, doing a, doing a lot of coaching. Uh, play a lot of darts um, in, in its place. I missed the football. Um, then managed to get myself reasonably fit again, but injury free, and, and have a good a good few years with Corinthians. Um, yeah, and I, I currently, when I can, play with the, the Corinthians vets team. Um, but obviously, that's very difficult, like injury, and obviously being busy with plenty of the other sides um, is quite difficult. But yeah, I try and play when I can. I, I still love the game. Yeah, it's brilliant that you're like, still trying to get involved where you can and still still getting playing time, which is great. I suppose yeah. being a chairman, it's probably a very busy role and you probably don't yeah, get much I time for actually playing. It's more, more organising. Yeah, no, I mean, luckily, I luckily the club's got some fantastic managers, um, so it's not too hard for me. Once you kind of know what you're doing, it's all good and I get a lot of support from them. Every manager from every team is, is top-notch, so I can't argue with that. They're all really responsive and kind of do their own thing, which is great. And I trust all of them. So, Brilliant. Great. OK, so let's jump into it then. So yeah. formation wise, how are we lining up? What are you saying? Yeah, it's a tough one, this, because obviously depending on formation would be dependent on players. So um, obviously there's course, a few yeah. players that have missed out purely through the formation. But um, I always like to play a free. I'm, I'm a very attacking minded player. So I'd like to play. Um, I do play a 4-3-3 three, three when I'm managed. But um, my selections, because of the players I've chosen, I'm going to go for a 3-4-3. Three, three. Lovely. Nice, three, four, nice, three. And, nice and attacking. Nice. Definitely. Three up front and then the four possibly dropping back in if uh, if they're on the break, maybe. Yeah, they're very attacking midfield. I mean, they've got some strong players in the lineup. As Once I go through it, you'll uh, obviously you'll know. So. Awesome. OK, so let's jump straight into that then. So in goal, who have we got? In goal, um, obviously over the years, having limited sides, we haven't had that many goalkeepers. Um, in the last few years, we've been really lucky. We've had an influx of fantastic goalkeepers. Um, but one really stands out, obviously, played with him quite a lot during the, my time actually playing and obviously got to manage him as well. Um, great lad, great shot stopper. Um, that's John Eckett. Um, okay. Been with us kind of, I think he's played over 300 times now for us. Very vocal, very passionate. Like I said, great shot stopper. Uh, a mate of all the lads. Um, probably one of the best local goalkeepers around. Definitely could have made it higher, I think, if he was a little bit taller, um, a little bit bigger. But yeah, he's a fantastic goalkeeper. I definitely would go with John Eckett. Brilliant, great. Awesome. So that's your goalkeeper sorted. Who's in front of him then? So moving on to the back three. Um, firstly, um, he'll be my captain. Um, and he is club captain currently, and that's Steve Kemp. Um, quite a tough decision with the, with the defenders because we have had some strong defenders at the club um, and also some strong captain candidates. Um, 
Neil Addington, the great captain, real leader. Um, but I've gone for Steve on, on his defending. I think he's the best player I've seen locally in the air. Rarely loses a header. Um, strong in the tackle. I mean, if you've ever played local football, you've probably been in Steve Kemp's pocket at some point. Um, <laughs> he, he's, he currently plays in the Saturday reserves and um, he also plays in the Vets first team. And, you know, every time he goes out on the pitch, 100%, that kind of player. Fantastic lad and great player. Yeah, I've, I've seen Steve play quite a few times now and it, you can clearly see that he's... Uh... Yeah, he knows what he's doing there at the back. So, uh, who's he got with him? Um, Sam is um, pretty much club legend. Made the most appearances of any player. Probably one of the, again the, one of the better defenders I've seen at grassroots level. Really consistent. Always a solid eight out of ten in a match. Never, never kind of gives you anything less than that. Um, you know, he still currently plays in the first team. And Sam probably wasn't the best player when he was younger. But he's really improved past people and he's always kind of been there with the top side of the club and he, he fancied giving it a go with the first team for the last couple of years and he's done really well, held Danny's position and he's been fantastic. So Brilliant. Uh, last defender. Side? Yeah, last defender. Um, didn't stay with us very long, probably because of ability, um, but he had a couple of good seasons there and that's Luke Wilson. Um, fantastic player. Um, reads the game really well. Um, obviously, like I said, he... he he does play at a higher level now in the Essex Senior League and has played higher than that. Morgan and Tiptree, Bowers, you know, he's been at all the, the good local clubs. Um, really good. Uh, fantastic long ball from defence. Can turn defence into attack in the clip of a finger. Um, yeah, really good player. Really dangerous from set pieces as well. Really good in the air, scores goals. Great lad. And obviously, it was obviously from our standard, we was never going to keep him, but he, he done really well for us and helped me out a lot and um, managed to play in the same team as him a few times. So, good player. Brilliant. That's a great experience playing alongside him then. So, I was never really, let's have I was a never really alongside him. I was never back that far. <laughs> OK, so let's have a look at the team so far. So, we've got who in goal? John Eckett, um, Steve Kemp, Sam Ayres, and Luke Wilson as the back four. Awesome. Brilliant. So, Ben, strong defence there. Who have we got playing in the centre of the park? Yeah, so, it's, again, difficult with midfield. Um, really popular position for a lot of players, strong players. So, I've not exactly put them into positions. I've just gone a flat four straight across the middle, um, try to get a range of kind of skill, pace, uh, defensive qualities, you know, hard work, and try to balance it up a bit. Um, first, first one on the team sheet, very underrated player. Played with him for a long while, known him since I was a young kid. Um, very, you know, very solid player, very aggressive, can often kind of put his foot into a game and dominate it and, and kind of boss it. Um, like I said, very underrated, great pass for the ball, uh, makes things look quite easy. Um, and again, very aggressive and dominating the tackle. And that's Danny Hacker. So I had the pleasure of playing with him on a Sunday as well in the Sunday League team for Atletico Benfleet. Uh, alongside another guy called Paul Brooker. Unfortunately, he missed out on the team. But again, really hard-working midfielder. It was it was so hard to pick to pick players. I can imagine, yeah. But Especially with 20 Daniel. years. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, who else you got? Um, second one on the team sheet in the midfield would be Daniel Ringer. Um, played for us for a couple of seasons. Uh, played with him a couple of times and mostly managed him. Um, but I've known Dan since he was kind of six, seven years old when we were together at Woodland Boys. Um, absolute talent back then. And I knew he'd be a good player from, from the moment you saw him. So comfortable on the ball. So difficult to get the ball off of him. Uh, again, a really underrated player. Um, played for Brush Rangers on a Sunday, who are obviously a top side um, with all his mates. Definitely, you know, could have gone higher, I think. Um, I think he did sign some pro, pro contracts when he was younger. Not sure where, but he, he was a very good player. And um, yeah, loved playing next to him. Just made it look so easy. You know, good player, Danny Ringer. Brilliant. Okay, who else we got? Uh, next one, Mikey Edgar. Um, very passionate, very opinionated. Um, kind of that can work both ways sometimes. You can brush people up the wrong way, but you want him on your team. Very talented, very fast, skillful scores great goals, you know, can dominate, can literally play anywhere. When I played with him, he was a, he was a midfielder, stroke attacker. Um, and then he moved on to a higher level to, to go and play in the Bryman or the Ishmian. 
um, ended up coming back to play a couple of seasons with us and I actually was managing then I put him in the centre of defence you know he was one of our strongest players all round and yeah re- top lad really funny um, great player Michael Edgar Does he remind you of any sort of professional player of today or previous? I don't know really I mean he was a kind of all action player he could score goals make a tackle very quick kind of a Stevie G I suppose someone like that you know Took, took set okay. pieces, took penalties, yeah. So I suppose, yeah, you, you know, that kind of player. Brilliant. Who else have we got on the team sheet then? Um, last one on the team sheet. Um, this one's a, a kind of a bit of a cheat because I tried to get him in some way, but um, he's more of an attacking midfielder and has played out wide, and that's John Parker. Um, again, really nice lad, really good in the changing room, good laugh, um, talented player. Very skillful, dribbles the ball really well. Again, very tough to get it off him without fouling him. Um, turned up for the big games. You know, when we had a big game that we got to win, he's always the one who's kind of nipping in and scoring an important goal and, you know, just literally taking the game by the scruff of the neck and, and, and running with the ball and just being very attacking. Um, yeah, so very good player. Played with him for a couple of seasons. Like, again, mostly managed him. Um, but, yeah, John Parker, good player. Brilliant. Well, let's have a look at that defence and midfield put together then. I suppose if you had to choose them in kind of positions, you'd have Danny Hacker sitting in the holding midfield role uh, with the other three just kind of let loose in front of him. So, Ben, you've selected three strikers. Who are they going to be? And I keep saying it, it's tough and it is hard, but I think these three definitely stand out. Um, I'd be surprised if these aren't in a lot of the picks uh, for people's dream team. Um, f- first off, um, I'm going to go for Senna Suave. Um, basically, one of the best grassroots players I've played with, managed. Um, total game changer, match winner. Um, you know, if for me, he probably would have made professional, I'm sure, if he'd have kept going, because he's that, that good. Um, you know, I'll tell you a story about Senna, actually. Um, we, I kind of met him before doing a, an insurance work course, so I knew of Senna. Um, but I, I knew he played football, but I didn't, you know, he wasn't from this kind of area. So we played a tournament, 11 a side tournament, pre season one day uh, over at Echo Club, and we were very weak that day. We had like no players, and we had to start the first game with kind of 10 players. I think we had like half an hour before the first game, and we drew Railway one of the, the good sides back then. Uh, and I basically just said, look, has anyone got any mates that can help fill in? Uh, bless him, we had a guy called Steve Lang who played that day, had a bad hip. Um, he's kind of 45 plus, but um, he kind of got stuck in, in the games that he played and he did fine. But yeah, so a guy called Matt Hodges who played that day, uh, phoned up his mate Senna, Senna wanders over, uh, puts a kit on and I recognised him straight away. I was like, oh, great, you know. And I said to the boys, I was doing the team talk, and I said, look, lads, you know, they're 20-minute games. Today, we can't just smash the ball up to Senna and expect him to, to do anything with it. I said, we've got to support him and try and keep the ball. We're going to get annihilated. So, first minute, whistle goes, we kick off. Ball goes out to the fullback, smashed it up to Senna. I'm thinking, oh, God. Took one touch, beat four players and smashed it in the top corner. We was 1-0 up. <laughs> Won the game 1-0. Um, he was absolutely different class and he, he doesn't strike you as that kind of player but he was just different class and obviously the lads were just really like laughing about it I think we all got back to the halfway line after celebrating and I was just like right lads new tactic get the ball smash it up to centre uh, it was great it was a really enjoyable day and I, he's that good I mean we played in a, in a cup final at East for Bury Lane uh, and he scored a, scored a perfect hat trick one right foot one left foot one header and we won the game 3-2 um, great lad Wish I could have got him playing a bit more, playing seriously. Um, I suppose he's only down for he's an Arsenal fan, so yeah, it's always a shame when it when that comes out. Yeah, the odd, game that. To, the, odd, the odd game came up to go and watch, and he missed the game because he was going at Arsenal. It's a shame, you know, like I said, but scored a hatful for us. You know, some of the best goals I've ever seen. He'd go down the line, and as a manager, I'm, I'm thinking, come on, cross the ball, and he just cut inside and smash it in the top corner, and you just. Okay, fair enough. You know, like I said, I, I had the privilege of playing with him for probably a season on and off. Um, again, most of my time was, was spent managing, but yeah, I did get to play with him. So. That's brilliant. So that's your first goal scorer. We know he scores goals. So who else have you got? 
Well, they, these these two are even more of goal scorers I'm going to name now. So, uh, a guy called Dan Fitch um, plays number nine straight down the middle, strong as an ox. Um, everyone knows Fitchy. Scores 20 plus every season, no matter where he plays. Uh, the interesting thing about this guy is he can cut it with anyone. So basically, you know, he'll start at kind of Division Four standard and he'll score goals and he'll make the game look easy. But then, you know, he'll get a call up for the, the reserves in the Olympian League because we're short and he'll go and put two, two, three goals in the back of the net. And you're thinking, you know, he, he's just got them levels. He's got gears. He can up it for when he needs to. Um, he's so dangerous with his head. You know, scores so many goals with his head. Um, he's a real hand for it. Horrible to play against. We played against him for years. Just glad he's on your team now, I suppose. So, yeah, that'd be damn fit straight down the middle. Brilliant. One of those people that just doesn't stop running, I can imagine. Uh, not not so much running. He, he, he does work really hard. I, I think it's the way he holds the ball up and brings everyone else into play. He's a very unselfish player. And, you know, he'd, instead of turning on, getting a shot off, he'd rather set it for someone and then get in the box for the header. I think that shows his quality. He's a very good player. Brilliant team player. Great. Yeah. And last but no no means least, who's your last yeah. striker? Yeah, I think this was an obvious one. I mean, he scored over 250 goals for the club. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play with him for that many years. It was virtually at the start um, when, when he first came over. Um, I'd actually left for a year um, and I wasn't playing. And then I come back and Frosty was involved. Uh, but yeah, Alan Frost, last player. Um top quality striker played for White and Zion all the big teams around this area scores hatfuls of goals again can play anywhere I played him at the back right back he's just one of those players that just knows the game um, good lad as well currently managing our Saturday A team in the Borough on Prem so he's very much a Corinthians lad as well been here a long time um, so yeah like I said it's been very difficult because we've got we've got so many like you know real Corinthians boys you know Ewan Atkinson, Anthony Clark, people like that. It just didn't make the cut. Maybe they would have done if I'd had a different formation because they both played fullback. But, you know, special mention to people like that. Um, been around a long time. People like Ben Sharp played a lot of games in the centre of defence. You know, it was really tough to get some of the, the players in. But, um, yeah, that's my uh, my dream team. Brilliant. Look at that. Awesome. So let's take a look now at the team in full. So just give us a run through of your final lineup, please, Ben. Right, so the final lineup would be John Eckett in goal, uh, a back three of Steve Kemp, Sam Ayres and Luke Wilson, um, a midfield of Danny Hacker, um, Danny Ringer, Michael Edgar and John Parker, um, and then a front three, a very dangerous front three of Sam Suave, Dan Fitch and Alan Frost. Brilliant. That's great. Look at that strong team there. So, Ben, I do have one more question for you before we wrap up today's session. If you had to have someone to look after that team and lead them forward and take them forward to go on and win titles and cups, who would your manager be? OK, yeah, that's um, that's quite a difficult question, that, Dan, to be honest. Um, I, obviously, I've done a lot of my playing under, you know, not really having a manager. It's more of a guy that turned up with a kit, put it on the side and we all just played. Um, and then obviously I took over the management of the what was then the first team um, for quite a while. So I haven't really played under that many managers at Corinthians. So I'm going to choose uh, two and I'm going to go kind of from a chairman's point of view and I'm going to choose the last two managers to win the manager of the league, uh, manager of the season at the presentation. And that'll be um, Dave Prowse, who currently manages the first team in the Vets. Really nice guy. Obviously got that team rocking, um, went promotion from two to one to Prem, remained unbeaten for a thousand days. Uh, great guy, pretty much won everything at that level. And our current first team manager, Chris Stoneham, um, really good guy, got the respect to the dressing room, um, got a bit of an aura about him. You know, there's a lot of young lads that play for him at the moment with with attitude and he manages to control that really well, got a lot of respect, uh, knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, been successful, won trophies, won the Olympian League division with us. So, yeah, obviously I didn't get the chance to play under him, but Sammy did. Um, so he can obviously, he might tell you a little bit more about that. But um, yeah, but I'm really looking forward to um, seeing other people's dream teams, actually. It's, it's a tough job. Um, and obviously, I, like I said, I didn't play most of them years. So the players that have come right the way through, it is going to be really hard because we've had a lot of good, good players. Some not as good. <laughs> but yeah, we've had some really good players at the club, so that's great. 
I've quite enjoyed it actually. Trying to trying to go through it and, and think. It's, you know, it's been a lot of. Yeah, old I can memories. imagine it being a tough a tough task, spending a lot of time sitting down thinking. You know, who can I put in? I suppose once you've got the formation, it makes it a little bit easier because obviously yeah. you, you can narrow it down to how many you can have in each position. But even then, it's probably yeah. still just as difficult. Perfect. Thanks very much for that, Ben. I hope you've enjoyed listing out your dream team and thank you for coming along. Any last comments from yourself? No, just thanks to you. Um, obviously, really good thing to, to do for the club. Quite fun, to be honest, like reminiscing old times and thinking about the players that played in the same team as you. Uh, like I said, it was really tough looking forward to actually looking at some of the others and comparing. Um, just a quick message to everyone, really, just stay safe. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be back playing soon. But um, yeah, thanks very much. No worries. Well, if you enjoyed watching this video, then please be sure to give it a like and share with friends and family. If you disagree with any of Ben's choices, of course, there is a comment section. So feel free to question some of his decisions if you feel it's right. Um, all of our social medias are now on the screen, so be sure to give us a follow on those as well. But apart from that, join us next week for another edition of Corinthians Dream Team. Thanks very much. See you soon.